Good evening everybody and once again welcome to the video. This video is going to be really really interesting. This is essentially about how to monitor Athena usage and understand your operations and control security and cost. So in this video I'll be talking about how can you monitor your Athena cost and create reports essentially. Let me rewind a little bit and give you a little background. So recently, um, you know, we have been using Athena in my company from past one and a half years. And recently, uh, you know, two days back, my project project manager comes and says, Somil, could you pull me a report and tell me what are the numbers, what are the data scanned and how much did we spend on each particular database or how much did we spend on ABC or which work groups are using, uh, which work groups are scanning the most of the data? I was like, um, I don't know. But then I started researching, I started Googling, that's when you get you know answers, right? And I found this amazing article, I took some of the code from their side, I mimicked a little bit, I changed a little bit, and I made a small version uh, for you guys. So I'm gonna be demonstrating you a beautiful lab here, which will essentially monitor the Athena usage cost. So let me go over the architecture uh, without, uh, <laughs> again, talking more. But before that, I, I, I want to, again, as I, as I said, right, I want to say a special thank you to Ori Nakar um, the, in the article, How to Monitor Athena Usage to Understand the Operations and Control Security Cost. It's a great article which provide me, provided uh, a lot of insights, right? So let's get started, man. I have a lab. I'll be showing you the code as well. So let's, let's get started. Data likes are great. They are flexible as they allow many object formats and multiple query engines. These are also cost effective. There is no need to manage or pay for resources like disk, CPU, memory. We used our data lake for years and were happy with the cost. The cost grew from month to month and we were still happy. Our data, uh, data lake grew along with our usage. As the cost con continued to rise, we became less happy mainly because we didn't know why that was happening. This is essentially the lines by the author, right? So. I have taken or I've came up with this architecture after reading that blog post, right? So there's a Lambda. This Lambda is essentially going to be scheduled on a cron job, which is going to run every single day. Okay. I'll show you everything on AWS. So don't worry. And the code. Now this Lambda will pull the, you know, uh, essentially matrix and usage, and it will dump all those uh, files into S3. We'll run glue crawler on that to identify the schema, query the metadata or the data which is there in the lake with S3 and build beautiful dashboards on QuickSight, which can give us information such as how much data was scanned, which for which database it was scanned, who are the work groups who did that, all, all that stuff. So uh, let me go uh, into the code now. This is lab number 26 and I, all the code is available for you absolutely free. Go and please download that. So if you go here and if I want to show you here, I'm defining my Lambda function. These are the environment variable. This Lambda is essentially scheduled every single day, right? And it's going to run on this cron expression. Uh, over here, I'm creating an S3 bucket. Again, uh, $env.report bucket, which means the value is injected from the environment variable. So I have a file called env. And then, of course, if you observe here, I have a variable called report bucket. So here I'm creating my S3 bucket and here I'm creating my glue database. Here I'm essentially creating a glue crawler that's gonna crawl over my database. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And now all the magic happens in the Lambda functions, right? So if you observe the Lambda code, what I have done or is essentially, uh, every time when the Lambda runs, it essentially takes a date time object and it essentially format into year, month, day. And then this will basically call a function, which is create work group history, which I have taken from essentially the article that was mentioned. And I have tweaked this a little bit, okay? Uh, once I get the data back, and essentially I'm putting that um, data that I get back into an S3. I'm creating um, the S3 path as, uh, if you observe, uh, my first name is uh, the table name, the year, month, day, and the file name is essentially over here, work group, then the date format and essentially some number, right? So I have already deployed my uh, stack. Uh, if you, if I can show you. So SLS deploy, this will essentially deploy the entire stack. I have already done that uh, prior to the video. So what I wanna show you is, hey, this is the Lambda function. Again, as I said, right? This Lambda function is uh, set on a cron, which will run every single day. And every day it will dump those files on S3. As you can see, it's uh, there's a cron expression here. 
Now, over here is the S3 bucket, which is again uh, created using serverless framework. So there's a folder called Athena reports year, month, day, and these are the files that are being generated by my Lambda function. Now, again, I can query my, um, I can query my S3 now, since I have made a glue crawler. I can essentially get the query execution ID. I can see the actual query, who did, what was the query that the people are running? Who are the users who did that, the work group? What was the output location where they did that? What was the database name? What was the catalog? I can also see, for example, uh, execution time, right? I can see the execution time, how much data was scanned, all the amazing matrix I can see, right? So now with this, I can essentially do a group by and I can say, okay, which database, uh, how much data was scanned for each database, right? Over a period of, let's say four days, five days, you could run a simple SQL query. And this will give you all the important, beautiful matrix. Uh, back to my screen, as you can see here, uh, I have a simple query that shows, uh, you know, all the data that is there in the lake. Uh, this is a, again a simple query, um, uh, again uh, a simple group by that shows the total amount of data scanned. This is again on my personal account, which is why these numbers are very tiny. But we have implemented the solution in my company, Job Target, and as you can see, in a matter of like four or five days, when I ran this, I, I knew this these database 700 gigabytes, 300 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes. So I was able to, you know, observe all these important matrix, right? The conclusion is monitoring your data lake usage continuously will help you to understand your operations and control your security and cost. You can get a better permission model by monitoring the actual usage uh, of the data by your users and role. You can also detect anomalies which lead uh, you to find the security incidents. Athena is one of the services that uh, that you have to monitor and the more services you cover, the better control you have. This is again the lines by the author, right? Uh, if you wanna go to the actual article, I recommend here, and this is the article here. And again, the author has a slight different approach and I have adopted a slight different approach when creating stuff, right? So if you come to this article, um, again, I'll leave all the resources in the description so you guys can check this out. Uh, as you can see, the author shows the power, right? They were monitoring all the usage, who did that, uh, and they essentially built beautiful dashboards using QuickSight, right? So a lot of cool stuff you could do, right? Uh, so let me again uh, come back. So what you would see in this lab is, again, all the code is there for you, right? So I'm just gonna zoom in and make sure you guys are aware about of all the code changes, right? So you have the ENV, Lambda function, and the YML file, okay? Again, I'm gonna repeat, uh, when you, if you are deciding to deploy this stack in your company, don't worry, I'm, I'll change all the access stuff. Make sure to have your access and secret key here. Then uh, again, uh, put your S3 bucket. This will create the S3 bucket, right? I put in the database name and then the ARN, right? To put the glue ARN, right? Now, once you inject all these ENV variable, you just have to say serverless deploy, as you can see, right? Uh, I was able to deploy the entire stack, right? And this Lambda function, as I said, right? Right now, I'm monitoring only one work group called Saumil. If you have 10, 20, 30, you could essentially add items in the array, and this will essentially go over each work group every day. It will pull off the matrix and dump the data on the lake, and then you can essentially run ad hoc queries to see the usage uh, in the Athena. Again, this is extremely, extremely important to monitor the usage of the lake because uh, as data lake grows, right, the data there is massive and huge. People are gonna query massive amount of data is scanned and uh, this might cost the company, uh, you know, there are increase in cost, right? So essentially having these stack and having these items uh, on your cloud will help you to monitor usage, right? which databases can like scanning how much data in a matter of month year you can then do like a cost prediction okay so i'm looking at abc cost right you can see which work groups are using more right uh, you could also find patterns over the time when are they running these queries in the day in the night in the week in the weekend all these amazing analytics could be derived if you have data as people always say data is the new oil right uh, so if you store all these matrix on like then only you can analyze. But if you don't have data, you can't do anything, right? So store the data, store the data in the S3, and then if you decide, you could essentially run Glue and Athena to run ad hoc queries and build dashboard using QuickSight if needed. Again, as I said, right, all these items are available for free of you. Uh, you know, the entire source code, the Lambda function, everything, including the infrastructure code, right? Everything is there in my lab section. I'll leave the labs in the description section below. 
this is i guess lab number 26 i hope you have enjoyed this video i hope you're enjoying this hands-on lab session i have and i hope you're enjoying these demos and try to adopt these solution in your company as well with that being said Keep smiling, keep programming. All the resources are in the description if needed, including the code. Try to deploy this solution in your company so this will allow you to monitor the cost uh, for your Athena. Thank you so much. And as I always say, knowledge is power. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming. I'll see you guys in the upcoming next video. Goodbye, guys.